We had a little chicken named Sasha. Sasha was a Polish hen who was born not only blind, but with a neurological disorder that affected her sight, but also she couldn't really lift her head, and she wobbled when she walked. Everyone said, oh, you've just got to put that little bird to sleep. It's just terrible. So we carried her around, we put her in a basket, and we tried to help her learn to fly. And one day when I was holding her in the basket, she jumped out and jumped on Joey's back. And for a whole month, every time she'd come out, she would jump on Joey's back and Joey would walk around. And yes, lo and behold, she began to raise her head, to hold her head high. And now she's a totally functioning, semi-blind chicken named Sasha who loves people, follows you around like a puppy dog. How did Sasha know that it would make her better to walk around on Joey's back? What made Joey say, sure, that's fine. This chicken can walk around in me. Isn't that how, you know, communion is made with people who have a like need or a like interest and then they do things for one another together and they become friends. And I think that's how it is with, with the animals. When you're feeling vulnerable, and we all do it sometime, animals are there to make us feel strong. They give us that wonderful sense of belonging, acceptance, and being understood. I know when I was a young girl, I was eight years old, and was having terrible difficulty with a stepfather who was abusive and a mother who couldn't face that. And the only thing I think that helped me to survive that difficult time was the milkman's horse. So I, I knew about the power of the horse to heal. And I decided one day when I was traveling in a, in a a slow train from Moscow to St. Petersburg, and a friend of mine had really betrayed me in a very hurtful way. And I was feeling nostalgic. I was looking out the window, and all of the trees, the birch and the pine, reminded me of Saskatchewan. And all of a sudden, it occurred to me, yes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to rescue a horse, and that horse is going to rescue me. And so that's what I did. My first horse was a beautiful horse named Emily. She was a famous racehorse, had made millions of dollars. But of course, as soon as she quit winning, as soon as she quit having babies that were healthy, they were going to send her off to the glue factory. And I brought her to my farm. And I promised that horse that she would have the best of life I could give her, the safest, the most comfortable, with no one demanding anything of her. And that pact, I just continued with every animal that I brought to the farm. Now, Twilight is, without question, the bossiest horse. She's the lead mare and such a good leader. She protects the whole herd. And she really doesn't other, like other people going in her stall. And one day, one of our chickens went marching like right across the farm to go into, set a nest, created this little nest for herself. Where? In Twilight's stall. So in goes this chicken, and she makes a nest in the middle of Twilight's stall and Twilight doesn't chase her out. And Twilight allows her and shares the stall with her. But why did the chicken go there? The chicken had a chicken coop where all the other chickens were. Why did she come out here? And sure enough, the answer to why that chicken went in that stall, a feral cat from the neighbor. And who chased her away, hell bent for leather? Of course, Twilight. Twilight was there to protect this baby chick from the cat. I can go on and on with those kind of examples of how animals know how they trust and, and how they really care for one another. They're not that different from human beings, you know, in that they develop attachments. The llamas are probably, well, they're very strange looking and people are curious about them and they're curious about people. And what they give people is a sense of calm. Those llamas are so calm. They're so peaceful. They feel so safe in the farm that whenever you come, they gather around you and take a look. And if, if you fill your hand with grain, they'll come and eat out of your hand. And, and they have become the mecca for children who may be autistic, kids who are in foster homes or in safe houses and, and have been abused. They just come out and they might 
brush the llamas. They might just sit with them, feed them, walk with them, whatever. And they become calm. They get a sense of self, of presence, of being important, of being valued. So, ha, huh, that's sort of life on the farm. You have to take time. You have to be present. You have to be aware. You can communicate with all the animals, the llamas, the chickens, the ducks, the doves, of course, the horses, if you take the time, if you slow down. And I pray that the fallout is that they will start to see the importance of being with animals, of being on the farm, of being with nature in this gentle, respectful way. Anyway, that's my hope, and so far, it seems to be working.